Ever feel like you're fighting your OBS settings more than the game you're actually playing? Yeah, I've felt that way too. And I've spent countless hours tweaking and testing the different settings inside of OBS. And I think I've finally cracked the code for a smooth Twitch live stream. In this video, we'll go through the OBS settings that actually make a difference. No fluff, just the good stuff and stick around to the end because I've stumbled upon a few lesser known tweaks and settings that are total game changers for your stream quality and lead to less likely to drop stream frames and stuff like that. Oh my goodness. So yeah, let's run that intro and then, you know, jump into it. Before we dive into today's content, let's go ahead and pause for a moment to consider the value of making smart decisions. Speaking of which, we're thrilled to once again partner with Mint Mobile, the pioneers in transforming the wireless industry. They're dedicated to providing premium wireless service without that hefty price tag we've all come to dread. Ever find yourself puzzled by the sky-high cost of your wireless bill? Well, if so, Mint Mobile is on a mission to demonstrate that there's a smarter way to do things. For a limited time, new customers can enjoy any three-month plan for just $15 a month. That's correct. You were hearing that correctly. 50% off their unlimited plan. Imagine accessing the nation's largest 5G network, enjoying unlimited talk and text, and all the benefits of a high-tier wireless experience at half the cost. The transition to Mint Mobile is a breeze thanks to their eSIM technology. Many of you can seamlessly switch over from the comfort of your home in as little as 15 minutes. And for those of you that prefer a physical SIM card, Mint Mobile's got you covered there with a free SIM sent directly to your doorstep. Let go of the old, overpriced, and convoluted ways of wireless. Head over to trymintmobile.com forward slash howtotech to snag this incredible offer and get premium wireless for just $15 a month. My wife and I jumped on the Mint Mobile bandwagon over a year ago, and we've been fans ever since. Who can resist the allure of significant savings? What's going on guys? Chad here from Out2Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And today we're going to be covering the best settings for OBS for streaming to Twitch. So if you guys want to stream on Twitch, well, here we go. Let's go ahead and get started and move over to the computer. I'm going to pull up my notes and we're going to go through these settings. As far as that goes, these are a lot of settings that Twitch recommends. And then there's going to be a few things sprinkled in. That's just like some extra flavor of me or somebody else going, Hey, this is something else that you can do to make it a little bit better or something that we all kind of know out there that could be useful. So let's get started first by going to our settings. So you can go to file or settings, or you can click settings down here in the bottom right hand corner. And then we're going to go to video because this is the first place I think that matters more than anything is let's get started on the right foot. So let's go ahead and select the right resolution and frame rate. So I've got mine set to 1920 by 1080 and you can see by default, mine also offers 1440p. This really doesn't matter, but it does this because that's what my monitor is. If I wanted to set this to 1440p, I could for recording purposes, but for streaming to Twitch, well, let's go ahead and leave that at 1920 by 1080. And then on our output scaled resolution, we're going to set that to the same thing, which basically means we're not going to scale a resolution. We're going to keep it the same. And then for our uh, FPS values, we're going to set that to 60 and then click apply. So hopefully that made a lot of sense. That's, it's really an easy part of this video. <laughs> so let's go over to our stream settings now. And, um, you, you'll want to go ahead and make sure that you link your account. If you get a stream key, you can use the stream key. Um, if you just want to connect account and sign into Twitch, do that. That's really all I have in that section. So let's go to the output settings. So this is where we go ahead and kind of configure our options for streaming to Twitch. And what we're going to do is we're going to go from simple to advanced mode. Now do not freak out. It says advanced. It's not as complicated mainly because it's like a test and I'm giving you all the answers. It's going to be so easy. So we're on the streaming tab and here's a few things that we want to cover that I, I think are going to save you a lot of heartache and um, stress. So, Let's get started. First, the audio track. One is set to the audio track, and then our audio encoder, we're gonna leave that on FFmpeg. And then if you use Twitch VOD tracks, by all means, go ahead and set that up, but I don't use that. So there we go. Our video encoder, well, we've got some options here. X264 is gonna be software encoding or your CPU doing the encoding of the video. If you don't have a really good CPU, I really don't recommend this. And if you have an option like NVIDIA NVENC, 
I highly suggest you use this. The reason I highly suggest you use this is because this is a hardware encoder and it's gonna take a lot of the burden off of your computer and just put it on your graphics card on a little processor um, that's specifically made for doing this kind of stuff. Thank you, NVIDIA, for that ability. And if you do use an AMD, graphics card. There is an equivalent and I will put it on screen right now, but I don't have an AMD card and I don't remember what it is. So it's on screen. Try that if you have that option as well. Um, if you wanted to, you could rescale the output again. So like we were talking earlier, if you wanted that video setting here to be set to 1440p, you could set that to 1440p and then you could downscale to 1080p here if you wanted to. Whenever it comes to the rate control for your live stream, we're pretty much going to recommend CBR all the time, constant boot rate. And then our bit rate that we're going to send is going to be 6,000. Now, there's a few reasons to use 6,000 or use less than 6,000. If you're streaming at 1080p 60, you should at the minimum be streaming at 6,000 kilobits per second, which translates to, yes, that's right, 6 megabits per second. Now, some people do recommend streaming at 8,000 kilobits per second, but by Twitch's recommendations, they don't tell you to do that. The video quality is probably going to be a little bit better, but you could stream at 100 megabits per second to Twitch. But I can tell you right now, Twitch isn't going to like it. Your stream is going to have issues and you're just going to be wasting bandwidth. So the good recommendation is 6,000 kilobits per second. If you want to venture up into about 8,000 kilobits per second, try that. But if you don't have encoding options on your channel, which is basically the drop downs that let people change from 1080p to 720p and stuff like that, your viewers may have issues if they're being forced eight megabits per second the entire time or otherwise known as 8,000 kilobits per second. Now that we've got that spiel out of the way, keyframe intervals by default, Twitch recommends this to be set to two per second. So set that instead of auto, don't leave it on auto. It literally says on Twitch's website to use two, so use two. There's a few different options for our presets and basically here's what we're gonna recommend. By default, set it to P5. If you want better quality, then um, kind of work your way up to P7. If your computer can run and handle P7, then stream at P7. There's going to be better quality um, or actually best quality. And P6 will be better and then P5 will be good. And uh, if you have to go down, go down, but um, you're going to see bad quality. And then I'm going to look like I lied to you about getting good quality for your Twitch stream. Um, so P5 to P7 on that. And then our tuning, we're going to set that to high quality. Or multi-pass mode, we're going to set this to, you've got two different options. you got quarter resolution and uh, full resolution. I recommend leaving it on two pass. By default, um, I like using full resolution. I feel like the video quality is a little bit better. But if you want to use quarter resolution, you should see a little bit of a less, uh, less impact on your computer. Our profile, we're going to set that to high. And our look ahead, we're going to leave that unchecked and our psychovisual tuning is going to be checked. Our max B frames are going to be set to two. And then I'm going to break down a common misconception because everybody's like, your GPU needs to be set to zero. Possibly. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about computers. And if you don't know what task manager is on a computer, um, press control shift escape and have your mind blown. Just do it. Control shift escape, mind blown. Um, the reason we select GPU zero is because most people in their computers nowadays have one graphics card, one graphics card. Well, that's pretty common nowadays compared to the old days of where we had SLI and people running like two to four graphics cards in their computers. Well, now it's pretty much just one. The reason why we select GPU zero is because computers count weird. Computers start at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if I was to have two graphics cards in this computer, GPU zero is the first graphics card. And if I added another graphics card, that would be GPU one. So things to keep in mind is for those of you out there that do have two GPUs in your computer, you can actually offload this onto another graphics card if you select it. So if I had say another NVIDIA graphics card, which I do have a few over here, I just don't have any on my computer. I can select that and then select GPU one and then now all my video games are going over GPU zero and GPU one is just handling encoding for my live stream. So it's another thing to keep in mind that if you have an older graphics card that still does NVENC encoding, it might be a good option to try to keep that in your computer case and maybe offload it there, which would possibly change this number from GPU zero to GPU one. 
Speaking of advanced settings, we're going to go over into advanced settings and talk about some more advanced settings. And we're not going to, I'm not going to blow your mind here. I'm not going to try to do anything crazy. And I'm telling you right now, whenever it comes to video renderers and all this other stuff, we're not going to worry about this stuff. Okay. I'm not going to scare you. We're not going to mess with this. Um, an honorable mention, if you want to add stream delay here, you can do so. Another thing that is recommended to do is to enable the auto reconnect. What this is basically going to do is if your live stream drops and stops sending data to your, you know, Twitch, what it's going to do is it's going to keep retrying to connect and it's not going to just show that you're offline. So that's kind of convenient um, to keep all your viewers from just being like, oh, he just ended his stream or his internet went out or his power went out and they just left. This is going to be useful in that scenario of where it's still going to try to reconnect. Um, some other things that we would recommend, and um, I've got two different options here. And if you are having issues with your stream settings and um, you dropping frames, and I'm going to mention this because I've had this issue before. I've set up stream settings like this before, and I've had enough bandwidth. But for some reason, my stream just keeps dropping frames. And it's not consistent. Like it could be 45 minutes into a stream, I start dropping frames. It could be two hours into a stream, I start dropping frames. If it's something you really can't identify, I would suggest maybe enabling network optimizations and then also possibly enabling dynamically changing the bit rate uh, on the fly to manage congestion. And this right here can also help a ton. These two settings I've seen work miracles for people that have had issues with streaming and are a bit like, just like, I can't stream because every single time I go to stream, I start dropping frames and my stream just is awful. So maybe enable those settings and that should work for you. So there you guys have it. That is the best possible settings that you could ever use for Twitch and live streaming. And if you disagree with me, please let me know in the comment section down below because it boosts engagement and I'd really appreciate it. So if you guys want to, please go ahead and also get subscribed because we're going to have future videos that come out just on OBS and talking about all the other different settings. If you guys haven't watched any of our other videos before, we've given out free transitions. Camera mask was something that we came out with last week, and they're really cool, and it's a whole pack of them. And then also just other videos on different plugins and reviews of those plugins on things for OBS and streaming on Twitch. So if you guys are interested, like I said, get subscribed, check out some of those other videos, and I will see you guys um, sometime soon. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.